As the world gets smaller and better connected, people and businesses will be the prime movers in realizing the potential of India in the 21st century. To tell us more about this global opportunity, here is Mr. Abhijit Kamra, Director Global Trade Amazon India, in conversation with Dr. Montek Singh Ahluwalia, Economist and former Deputy Chairman of Planning Commission, Government of India, and Mr. Eric Brosa, Vice President, International Marketplaces and Retail, Amazon. Hello everyone, I am Abhijit Kamra and I am the Director of Global Trade at Amazon India. Welcome to Amazon Sambhav 2022. It's a privilege to bring you an exciting fireside chat on exports with the theme of scaling India's role in global supply chains and building global brands from India. Exports has been a key driver for boosting the economy, generating employment by providing greater market access and consequently continues to be an important area for governments world over. In India, we are seeing a lot of momentum in exports. For the first time in history, India has breached the $400 billion mark in annual merchandise exports for FI21 and 22. And this has been made possible due to the unwavering commitment of the entire ecosystem associated with exports. As India moves towards the ambition of becoming an export superpower, we believe that embracing technology and e-commerce will be integral to unlocking India's exports potential and creating truly global brands from India. Every day at Amazon, we see how technology and e-commerce are helping lower the entry barrier for lakhs of MSMEs and entrepreneurs to expand their horizons and serve customers not only in India but across the world. Our e-commerce exports program, Global Selling, that was launched in 2015, has quickly grown to over 1 lakh exporters, including marquee Indian brands as well as digital first brands. Encouraged by the momentum that the program is witnessing, we have scaled up our commitment to boost exports from the country and have taken a pledge to enable $20 billion in cumulative exports from India by 2025. To discuss more on this opportunity and the road ahead, I am excited to introduce two very distinguished guests. First, I would like to welcome Eric Brissard, Vice President, International Marketplaces and Retail at Amazon. Based in Seattle, Washington, Eric leads Amazon's international marketplace businesses in Europe, Japan, China and Australia, as well as all across border initiatives worldwide. Welcome, Eric. Our second speaker needs no formal introduction. Dr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, the former Deputy Chairman of India's Planning Commission, a renowned economist and Padma Bhushan awardee. Mr. Aluwalia's rules have ranged from being the first director of the Independent Evaluation Office at the IMF to being the youngest division chief of World Bank. Welcome, Dr. Aluwalia. Uh, welcome to both of you. Um, let's drive straight into the questions we have for you today. Let me get started with you, uh, Dr. Aluwalia. We're emerging from two years of tremendous uncertainty in what looks like a period of rebuilding and rejuvenating the economy. What role do you see exports as a sector playing as India looks at enhancing its position in the global economy? Well, as you say, I mean, uh, like other countries, we are kind of emerging from a pretty, pretty bad uh, position in the previous year because of the pandemic. And I mean, like the rest of the world, we are also swamped with uncertainty about what's going to be the impact of Russia, Ukraine in the year ahead. So quite honestly, I think the biggest thing about the year ahead is uncertainty. Uh, there's no question in my mind that exports, they're important in two ways. I mean, one is that we do need, in my view, we need to keep giving importance to exports uh, you know, for many years, as we moved into an open economy, <clears throat> exports did quite well. Then for several years, they began to stagnate and even decline. Uh, this last year, they picked up again, which is very good. Uh, but I think they have to go a lot higher. Uh, and therefore, from India's point of view, uh, it's a measure of whether India is doing well that is actually exporting. A part of the problem here is that India also sort of imports crude oil and exports products. And that can lead to a, 
exaggerated uh, estimate of what's happening on the export front, particularly when prices go up. So you get a, you pay a lot for imports and then you make another few percent on it when you export. But I think exports have done well, even if you keep out oil. So that part of the story is good. Uh, we need to keep watching it because I think everybody will be, both internally and externally, will be looking at whether India's gaining credibility and competitiveness in export markets. I think when it comes to um, particularly the role of uh, global players like Amazon, uh, I mean, people are aware that Amazon can provide a platform for Indian exporters, MSME, small, medium, whatever, in order to access markets that are otherwise difficult to get to. So I've no doubt that if Amazon actually puts up an aggressive export target and delivers it, that would be counted as a very positive development. I mean, there will be people who will want to say, have you simply sort of diverted what was being exported without the Amazon platform to being exported through the Amazon platform? Those kinds of questions can't be answered. Uh, but the important thing is, if the platform is actually onboarding a number of MSMEs and producing a lot of exports, that will certainly count as a very positive thing. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Um, Eric, uh, building on um, Dr. Singh's last observation, um, what do you think, how has Amazon uh, built capabilities um, through this pandemic to serve customers across the world? Um, I ask this question speci specifically in the context of the goal we've taken to enable $20 billion of cumulative exports from India by 2025. Yeah, thank you, Abhijit. Um, I'd like to start by talking about the recent past of Amazon and how Amazon's roles evolved tremendously. I mean, the unprecedented, ch unprecedented ch challenges the world has seen over the last few years. As you, as, as you know, no one really had a playbook you know, to deal with the disruption we really experienced. As most physical venue closed, millions of people came to Amazon relying to, on Amazon to get PPE, food, clothing, and various other items. It was a really a tremendous change in the demand curve that we ended up experiencing. What we had to do is scale up very quickly our capabilities to serve that demand. And what really helped us were the many, many years before the pandemic, where we build infrastructure across the world to be able to scale it up and really transform our ability to deliver products and services to our partners and customers. To give you an example, um, we used, it used to be taking us over 18 hours you know, to fulfill an item, meaning from the, the time we would get the order to the time it would, be, it would be on the truck, 18 hours. Today, it takes us two hours. That's the, the type of improvements we've made to be able to fulfill the demand I was talking, I was talking about. As you've seen this development, millions of partners, small sellers, medium sellers, large sellers, rely on us to deliver their products. So this is not only a set of investments that are available to Amazon, these investments we make available to all our partners across the world. And that's infrastructure is, that is so critically important to enable the exports like Dr. Aluwalia just talked about. Thank you, thank you for that perspective, Eric. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Aluwalia, now coming back to you. Uh, as somebody who's seen uh, India's evolution and development so closely, uh, what do you think are the fundamental strengths we have uh, that are some of the, and some of the important steps that we need to take to encourage exports from our country? Well, I mean, obviously, one of the strengths that you have is that you're a platform that's known around the world. So from any Indian exporter's perspective, you know, although exporters now through the net uh, can reach out to people in many, many different ways, uh, there's no question that if somebody wants something, and they go into Amazon and plug in what they're searching for, uh, and then a whole lot of products will come up. If a whole lot of Indian products also come up, that's a very major game. Uh, and I think uh, that is what you bring to the table, which at least at the moment, uh, nobody else brings because elsewhere in the world, 
uh, there are you have some competitors domestically, but they're, they're not internationally <clears throat> known as yet. So uh, your the biggest uh, the special advantage that you have is give Indian exporters uh, a platform which the world is familiar with. And the question is, are they using it? Are you helping them to use it? Certainly, if you measure what's coming out of that platform in terms of orders directed to these guys, that will, as it were, resound very positively uh, in public perception as a contribution of Amazon. I mean, I'm not counting your contribution to consumers because, I mean, after all, uh, if you're, you could be making a huge, you are making a huge contribution to Indian consumers, but you're talking about exports here and not just e-commerce generally. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alwalia. Um, <clears throat> Eric, um, uh, you, you talked about investments uh, in logistics technology. What does it really mean for Indian businesses? You've been interacting with Indian entrepreneurs for a very long time uh, and then seen how exports from India has shaped up. Uh, what do you see that's different now versus what was, let's say, a decade ago or 15 years ago? I mean, if you think of where, 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 where we were maybe 10, 20 years ago, if you were a small or large entrepreneur from India and wanted to export, reach customers outside of India, you, you had a long journey in front of you. You might have had to go to, to trade fairs, find partners, or build local logistics in each of the countries you wanted to go to. They were, at the end of the day, many intermediaries between your brand, your product, and the end customer. And in a lot of instances, you never really had a brand. You were, you were relinquishing the control of your product, the image, the marketing, the pricing of that product to a large number of partners. Today, Amazon makes the, the world much smaller, a fair marketplace for everyone, no matter what your size and provide you the ability to reach customers directly. And that's really cru crucial. What it means that you know, if you're, for example, a toy seller uh, from India and you want to deliver products and sell and build a brand in Europe or in the US or in Japan, you can do so directly by leveraging the infrastructure I talked about earlier. And that's really transformative because this is no longer, again, relinquishing, as I mentioned, the control of your product, but this is really reaching customer directly. And that's really where technology is massively transformative. Thanks, Eric, for that perspective. Um, Dr. Aluwalia, let's talk about Brand India now. Uh, what's your view on the kind of ecosystem uh, we need to create to build global brands from India? We, we all know that we have great products that are manufactured in India, but how do we put the global Indian brand there? Well, it's not my area of expertise, uh, how you do that, but I can certainly, I agree with the basic proposition that uh, a lot of people produce good products, tie up with foreign brands, uh, market them as their products, and about all you see uh, in that is when you, whatever it is, whether it's a, a bed sheet or a bit of a, clothing or something you see made in India label inside, but you don't actually promote the brand. I mean, there's no question and what I think Eric was saying, that if, if you can have a system where somebody is searching uh, for a product on an e-commerce website like Amazon, and you search for whatever, uh, and out of that comes an Indian branded product, with all sorts of descriptions, etc., and people start uh, buying it, uh, you know, you have promoted the brand. I mean, the earlier notion of promoting brand India was very much, you know, having huge fairs and uh, going to trade fairs and putting up pavilions with India products, etc. And that's a very old fashioned kind of concept because uh, now you can presumably directly approach uh, customers. Uh, and I mean, you know, the idea that you have to approach 200 people who will turn up at a particular trade fair uh, is given way to the idea of using IT in order to reach out directly to customers. And I think that's, that's very important. It's a, it's a complete uh, 
a game changer. Whether how we exploit it is uh, is not in my technical remit. I don't know how to do that, but I can see as an economist that if somebody was advising someone, look, this is the best way of doing it. I mean, we will soon work out what works and what doesn't work. I mean, the, the brand issue is very important because, you know, at least when I lived in the United States, I mean, if you went down one of those brick and mortar grocery stores, there would be a, a thing saying Indian spices, but they'd all be McCormick brand. Uh, you would not find on the stores any Indian spice brand at all. Uh, maybe in the case of Basmati rice, you might find something which was actually packaged in India, but even that was actually rare. And so if you can change that, that makes a big difference. Thank you for that interesting perspective, uh, Dr. Singh. Uh, Eric, I'm going to ask you a similar question. Um, how do you see the customer response for Made in India brands now? And what is driving this? And, and what are some of the fast growth categories from India on Amazon globally? The, I mean, the short answer is that the demand is very good. The demand is very good because the products are great. It's like India as a manufacturing base is a really great country across a large number of categories, you know, from jewelry to home products to toys, all these categories have, have a really big potential. And because we now enable these manufacturers to go directly to consumers, customers react. And this is not, this is not at all only about the Indian community in the US or in Europe or wherever it may be. It's about any customer that's on Amazon, as Dr. Aluwali has said, who comes and starts searching for products, is presented products that are coming directly from these brand owners. They're in control. They can list a product or thousands of products. They can decide how to price. They can decide how to advertise. They obviously choose and, you know, how to market their brand. So that combination you know, leads to a lot of demand because these products are very, very good value. The ability to be direct from you know, the manufacturer and the brand owner to the consumer creates a lot of value. It also enables the brands to learn very quickly because they're getting feedback from the customer base very, very directly. You know, one of one example is Vitamin T, you know, which is one of our sellers who's, you know, was part of the their products were part of the 22 Oscars goodie bag. They were a couple of years ago a part of Oprah's favorite, which is, you know, in the US is a sign of a brand that really has made it in terms of its reputation and its integration into into the, the US perception of what a brand might be. So, it, and it's not only, you know, I, I've picked one example, but there are many, many examples. And in many, many ways, we always say that Amazon, it's day one. I think it's very much day one where the opportunity is here. You know, people can seize it today and really expand their business and build their business. Thank you, Eric. Um, very uh, bullish, positive thoughts for Indian brands. Um, I'm, I'm at the end of our conversation. So, uh, Dr. Aluwalia, uh, I would love to get uh, your concluding thoughts. Uh, when do you think India is going to become one of the leading exporters in the world? And what, according to you, are the top three things we must do as a country to help accelerate the growth that Eric and you were talking about? You know, we have a very, very long way before we can be what you call one of the leading exporters in the world. I mean, remember, our share of world trade is pretty low. Uh, so I think rather than position ourselves as when are we going to be one of the leading exporters, I think we need to position ourselves that <clears throat> when do we get back to a more dynamic uh, export performance than we've had for a set of years. Uh, and I think the most important thing to my mind is uh, first, I mean, clearly uh, uh, having good products and being competitive, et cetera, is critical. Uh, some questions can be raised on uh, uh, how important is it to remain open. And, you know, my view is that uh, you gain competitiveness if you remain open. So I think that uh, India needs to be more open, not just uh, in order to export, but personally, I think we need to be more open also to imports. I mean, the only way Indian exporters will actually uh, 
know what is good quality is if Indian consumers also have a chance to see good quality products uh, and Indian exporter, Indian producers, you know, no Indian, uh, there are very few Indians who are just exporters. I mean, after all, this is a large country. So a lot of the manufacturers are really uh, exploiting the domestic market, tapping the domestic market, and then using that strength also to export. Sure, there are some areas like jewelry and so on, where you have practically 100% export uh, efforts. But if you're talking about manufacturing and so on, it's a much broader range of things. Uh, and the quality of what, what is sold domestically and the pressure that the domestic market puts on increasing quality is a very important uh, part of becoming successful in exports. So I just hope that we, we retain that and keep watching export performance. I mean, the, the real point is that it's relatively easy for many years to simply tap the domestic market and say you're producing more because you're substituting for imports. It's only when you export that you're really demonstrating that you're competitive. Because if you're exporting, then you're exporting against world competition. So I think that uh, for us to become a leading exporter, we have to become a much bigger country in terms of GDP. Uh, but well before that, we could become, we could, we could have a situation where our growth rate is high and export growth rate is even higher. And if we can do that, I think that'd be pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Singh. Um, Eric, um, you've seen um, uh, business owners, sellers, MSMEs from across the world grow using Amazon. Uh, what would be your advice for all the entrepreneurs and business owners in the audience who aspire to build global brands from India? Yeah, and I think I really, I think what Dr. Aluwale just was saying really resonated with me. Is like, you know, you, we, we say at Amazon, start with a customer and work backwards. And that's the way your products become competitive in the world competition you were describing. And that's what I, I would say is that if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an innovator, if you're a manufacturer, really focus on understanding the customer and what the customer needs. And again, you know, the Amazon systems and the processes we've put in place enables you to do that because you get feedback directly for the customers. That's invaluable. So really focusing on that end customer, evolving the product, evolving the pricing, evolving your marketing, is really one should do at a very good level of detail so that you know, your product can evolve. The second thing is that focus on, focus on product quality. Really ensure that as you do that, as you learn from your customer, you transfer that into building great products. This is really what our partners, our sellers from India are doing so well so that these products can then get great customer reviews and the word of mouth and really contribute to to building, to building a business. And lastly, I would say, think globally day one. So don't only think about the Indian domestic market, don't only think about the US, but really start thinking about how you are going to build a global brand as we enable you to do so, to do so at very low cost. And that's going to enable your business to grow and be faster more quickly, which again, you will benefit from the scale you're creating and drive more investments and, and a more profitable business more, more quickly. So these would be the three things I would say. Start with a customer and focus on the customers, build fantastic products, and think globally by leveraging all the, the services and uh, infrastructure we've built across the world. Thank you. That's, that's great actionable advice for everybody out here who's listening, who wants to build a global brand from India. Uh, with that, uh, we come to the end of this very engaging fireside chat. Thank you very much, Dr. Aluwalia and Eric uh, for joining us today here at Sambhav 2022 and sharing your thoughts with us. I would also like to thank uh, everyone who's logged in to be part of this session. Stay tuned, lots more coming your way uh, in Amazon Sambhav 2022. Thank you everyone and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank Goodbye. you very much. Thank, thank you. you.